students welcome to the next lecture on the iit jam mathematical statistics today we will discuss about the how you can solve the question number 1 to 10 of the iit jam 2019 so we will see some shortcut tricks also how you can solve all these questions within a one minutes in your examinations myself dr gar work in the school of mathematics thapar institute you can simply follow this link for finding the various videos on the previous iit jams competitions so look at that the first question is that you have to identify that which of the following is always true so whenever you are thinking which of the following is true you have to look about the options very carefully so firstly if you go through the options are there they are talking about the convergent sequence everybody is a convergent so what is the meaning of this sequence xn is convergent what is the meaning of that it means whenever limit n approaches infinity that will be a finite number that's the meaning of this say l now you can see that now we will discard so clearly see that this is also the convergent because whenever x if you take the limit of this as n approaches infinity so what is that this is e of limit xn so this is that e of l is there so that always be a finite number because l is finite so therefore this is my convergent sequence so this is the right answer but how you can discard the other options are there you can see xn is a convergent sequence then it is a monotony so which is not always true you can always see that you can see this is what is that whenever you are taking what is that this is nothing but the oscillating series and you can see it is always be convergent because its answer is always be finite zero so you can see that this is a convergent sequence but it is not a uh, monotony so this option is my false look about the second one xn square is always is a convergent but this is again whenever is a square quantity you have to always think about here series so what is that if you consider this series what is the xn square this is always one so what is the limit is a finite value so this is a convergent but is it always convergent this is always con this is not a convergent because this is a uh, oscillating series are there moreover uh, apart from this you can also say is a 1 by n when you take the series xn is 1 by n then xn square is 1 by n square both are my convergent so it means it does not convert that's true but this is a counter example of this so it means this option is also discard uh, this option you, you have to think about the difference so think about some coaches are there like of this so if you think about this series k varies from 1 to n then clearly says that xn plus 1 minus xn what is that xn plus 1 of minus xn will goes to 1 upon n plus 1 which goes to the zero so that is a convergent but the series is not a convergent so the right answer is only one by using this simple concept about look at about the second one so whenever in in your competition they are asking about the local maxima minima saddle point what you can do you always draw this that this matrix how many variables are there there are always two so there are my 2 cross 2 so this is my fxx fxy fyx fyy fxx means that is a partial derivative so what is the partial derivative of this with respect to the x and then again x it is my 6x what is that it is my minus 6y this is again minus 6y this is my minus of 6x now look about the point 0 0 so what is that answer is my 0 0 0 and 0 so whenever always remember this rule whenever the first this one is a uh, greater than 0 less than 0 or is equal to 0 whenever the first point is my equal to 0 that's always be the saddle point so since it is here so you can say it's a saddle point is the right answer on the other hand when it's a greater than 0 and then find this is my say if i call this is my a so this is the a1 if you consider the determinant of a this is my here if it is a greater than 0 both are my greater than 0 so you can consider as a minimum if the first one is second one is a then maximum and if uh, one of them is a zero then called as a saddle look about this here so you have this uh, definite integral you have to find the first derivative so that's a very simple how you can do the first derivative of this so firstly you have to what is the rule of this whenever you take from a to b fx what is the derivative of this if i say this is i what is the derivative of this so firstly you take fb upper limit partial derivative of b uh, if with respect to the x minus lower limit f of a partial derivative of a with respect to the x now we can apply here so since upper limit is my four constant so when you take this 
partial derivative of 4 is a 0 f of a so that is f of this so it will be my 4 plus x to the power 6 and the derivative of this with respect to the x3 x square now you want at the point x is equal to 1 what is the answer of this this is my root 5 this is 3 so that is a 3 root 5 is the right answer look at the another one is there uh, that's again a very simple task about that so you have the some linear transformation is given you have to find this that's a very simple so firstly you have to take this transformation on the both side this value is nothing but my a b this is alpha what is the transformation of 1 comma 2 this is 1 0 what is the transformation of the 2 comma 1 is 0 comma 1 so if you equate them a is nothing but alpha b is nothing but beta so this transformation becomes twice the value of alpha plus beta now how you can find the value of alpha beta you can start from here equate the coefficients 3 is this value and minus of 2 is 2 alpha plus beta how you can solve them you can multiply by 2 and then subtract them so it will be 7 it will be my minus 3 alpha plus 0 so alpha is my minus 7 by 3 substitute this alpha minus 7 by 3 in here you will get beta as my 8 by 3 so substitute this value in this case what is the alpha plus beta is 1 by 3 so the answer is my 2 by 3 right answer look at the another one is there so you have to find the probability of exactly two heads so probability of two heads out of the four tosses so what is the meaning of that you toss the four you toss four times where the c1 and c2 are here exactly two heads are there so what are there two bias points so what are the possibilities about that if you read this it's a very simple question either the c1 coin has the two heads it means the other two are my tails for the c2 or c1 has my two tails if i say this is my c1 and this is for my c2 and these are my two heads for the c2 otherwise it can have a one head it can have a one head for the c1 and c2 it means it's a one tail and it's a one tail arm. now you can find the probabilities what is the probability of getting the two heads in the c1 this is the probability of the one head so the probability of the two head is 4 by 9 that is of the scale two tail this is the probability of the head so what is the probability of the tail is 1 by 4 so the probability of this is 1 by 16 Similarly, for this case, two tail. What is the probability of the two tail in the C1? So, two by three is a head probability. So, one by three is a tail probability. So, one by nine, two heads is my nine by sixteen. What is the probability of the two heads, one tail, and one tail and this? So, what is the probability of one head? Is a two by three of what is the probability of the one tail in the first one? So, that's a one by three. In this case, C2, what is the probability of the one head is 3 by 4. What is the probability of the one by tail is here. Now, both occurring at the same time, so the total probability is here. But also, it can be here that the first one is the tail, second one is the head, so it can be the double of this. So, what is that? It will be 2 times 9, 16. So, 9 into 16 is here. So, 3 to the 6. So, it will be my 12 upon 9 into 16. So, you can see 9 upon 16, 144 is LCM. What is that? This is 4 plus 9 plus 12. So, what is that? 13 plus 12 is my here. So, it's a 9. It's a 9 plus 4, 13. 13 plus 12 is my, uh, sorry, it's a 2 by 3. Then, it's a 6. No, none of the answer is there. Where is the mistake? Probability of the head is my 2 by 3. Probability of the one tail is my 1 by 3. That's 2. But, but put here this is a sorry this is the double this is also be the double because there is also option so it's multiplied by 2 so that's my 24 so 24 is my here is the right answer look at the sixth one is there so that is nothing but my probability mass function so we all know that what is the probability mass function each of the probabilities greater than 0 sum is my 1 so firstly you have to write this in terms of probability mass function you can write here Whenever n is minus 1, it values my 2c and here. Your target is to find the expected value of c. What is the expected value? So, this into this minus of 2c 
माइनस ऑफ टू सी प्लस जीरो प्लस सी प्लस फोर सी सो फोर विल बी कैंसल आउट एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू इज सी सो योर टारगेट इज टू फाइंड दी एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ सी ऑन वट इज दैट इट विल बी सिंस इट्स अ पी एम एफ सो द टोटल आंसर इज माई वन इट्स अ माइनस वन टू प्लस वन दिस आंसर इज माई थ्री बाई फोर सो वट अबाउट द रिमेनिंग वन दैट इज सी प्लस टू सी इज नथिंग बट माई वन बाय फोर सो वट इज द आंसर ऑफ सी इज वन बाय ट्वेल्व सो दैट्स एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू इज माई वन बाय टू दैट्स अ वेरी सिंपल टर्म लुक फॉर दिस सो इट इज गिवन दैट इट्स अ पॉइजा डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो वट इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी मास फंक्शन ऑफ द पॉइजा डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दिस इज माई प्रोबेबिलिटी मास फंक्शन ऑफ दिस एंड ऑल ऑफ अस नोज दैट एक्स वैल्यू इज वेरी फ्रॉम जीरो वन टू एंड सॉन सो इफ यू सब्सटीट्यूट दिस वैल्यू हेयर एंड यू कैन सिंप्लीफाई वट इज दैट वैन यू एक्स इज वन इट इज माई दिस अपॉन वन टू टाइम्स एनीथिंग पावर जीरो वन वन इज देयर दिस इज हेयर ई रेस पावर अपॉन टू फैक्टर सो ई रेस पावर लैमडा विल बी कैंसल आउट सो लैमडा प्लस टू विल बी माई सिक्स लैमडा स्केयर सो कैन यू फाइंड द इजली वैल्यू ऑफ दिस यू कैन गेट दी टू वैल्यूज नाउ योर टारगेट इज टू फाइंड दी वैल्यू ऑफ ई प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स जीरो सो वट इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एक्स जीरो इज दिस इज नथिंग बट माई हेयर नाउ वन यू कैन सब्सटीट्यूट दी वन ऑफ वन हेयर दिस इज माई हेयर विच वन इज द वैल्यू सेटिस्फाइड सो यू कैन सी द पॉइंट फाइव वन जीरो थ्री फॉर विच वन इज लाइज हेयर फाइव वन लाइज इन दिस केस दैट इज द रिक्वायर्ड आंसर ऑफ दिस प्रॉब्लम लुक एट दी एट्थ वन आर देयर सो यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट दैट यू हैव टू फाइंड द कन्वर्जेंस इन प्रॉबिलिटी सो वेन एवर देर इज अ कन्वर्जेंस इन प्रॉबिलिटी यू ऑलवेज लुक अबाउट दी सेंटर लिमिट थीरो दैट्स अ सिंपल टास्क अबाउट दैट वट एवर द क्वेश्चन राइज इज हियर सो यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट दी एस एन सो वट इज द सेंटर लिमिट थीरो मीस यू हैव टू फाइंड दी एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ दिस एस एन डिवाइडेड बाय वेरियंस ऑफ एस एन सो अवर मेजर टारगेट इज टू फाइंड दी एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ दी एस एन सो वट इज एस एन इज एक्साइज एक्साइज आर माई आई आई डी सो वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दी एस एन दिस इज नथिंग बट माई सम ऑफ ईच एक्साइज सो वट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ द एक्साइज हियर डू यू गेट एनी ऑफ द प्रोबेबिलिटी मास फंक्शन हुज कम्स फ्रॉम द फैक्टोरियल येस दैट्स अ पॉइजा डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो वी ऑल नोज दैट इज अ पॉइजा डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वी ऑल नोज मीन एंड वेरियंस आर सेम कैन यू कोर लेट दिस फैक्टर can i link this one as of e raised to power minus of lambda so this is lambda raised to power x i can write this value as log of so what is the value so whenever you say it's minus of 2 so it can be written like of this i can write e raised to power this 2 1 by 2 i can written like this way and the rest of the part you can see is m upon m factorial so what is that lambda is nothing but my log of 2 so mean is nothing but lambda so it means expected value of the x is log 2 this is log 2 this is log 2 so what is the total of this this is nothing but my n log of 2 so you can see this option cancel only this option is true this option n is not there and log is true so this option b is the right answer look at the ninth question are there so you have to think about this continuous distribution Okay, so that's again a very simple. What is the unbiased estimate? We will see. Do you remember any of the distribution who is coming out the exponential part? Yes, that's a normal distribution. So that's over. Once you know the normal distribution, how you find the expected? What is the unbiased estimate? If you said t is the unbiased estimate of mu, what is the meaning of that? Expected value of t is nothing but my mu. That's a simple meaning. So it means you have to find the expected value of the x i's, and x i's are given to be random sample. It means they are the i a d. So you have, can you find the mean of this? There is no need to integration. This part is exponent. This part is a normal distribution. What is the mean of this part? Mean of this part is nothing but by two mu. What is the mean of this part is four mu. Okay, and since it is a plus sign and this is a one by two, so I can write this part as of this. This part is a normal distribution. The mean is my two new. This part is my four new, and this is one by two. So the mean is my three new. So what is the meaning of that? X i is has a three new. This also has a three new. So what is the total of them? So the mean of this t is my three and new. So you can see when it will be here. So if you divide this value by three n, then only it can be mu. So what is the answer of this? 
this C is the right answer of this problem. Look at the last question are there. So this is the here. That's a very very simple question about that. Whenever you are talking about this testing of the hypothesis, what is the rejection reason? You always look about this. You always look about this. This is my rejection portion. Okay, so this is my C1 and C2 by because C1 is always less than of C2. So this is my rejected portion. This is my accepted. So what? Look at that. C1 lies between C2. That is accepted, but we need a rejected. So this option cancel out. What is our what is our rejection reason? Either this x is less than of the C1. This option or greater than of this. This option may be true. This option also cancel out. This option or this option. Now whether the A or D are there. Look at that. What is that? This theta is nothing but my mean. Fine. So what is the mean of the x i's? Mean of the x i's can be written as of this. Okay, what is x i? Now they are in the y i. Can you find the value of the x i from here? What is the value of the x i? It is nothing but my log y. So it means the expression will be log of y i is less than c one. Log of y i is greater than of the c two. So the right answer is my only d. So this is the way you can solve these uh, questions in a very simple trick shortcut trick sir. In our next class, we will see our 10 to 11 to 20 questions again with the help of the shortcut tricks. Else, you can simply follow the playlist name IIT Jam Statistics channel name Dr. Hishkar, where you can find the various of the previous year papers 2022 are there and many more. Similarly, for the 2021 and many more are there in this channel. If you like, share, and comments on this video with your friends, thank you very much. Best of luck, students. Happy. Day.